In this video for Computer Science 9618 AS level, we're going to further practice problem solving and that skill is going to come in handy on your paper 2 exam. Let's take a look at our practice question today to sharpen that problem solving. A student is learning about random number generation. She's investigating how many times the random function needs to be called before every number in a given series is generated. She is using pseudocode to develop a procedure, test ran, which will do the following. Now we're gonna be writing actual code because we're focusing on problem solving, not pseudocode. Now as the test gets closer, we will be posting videos on pseudocode, but today we're focused on problem solving and writing the algorithm that will satisfy the test ran condition, which does the following. Uses the random number function to generate an integer value in the range one to 50 inclusive. What does that mean? That means we're going to generate numbers between 1 and 50, but we're going to include the lower bound as 1. The upper bound, we're going to include 50. Count how many times the random function needs to be called before all 50 values have been generated. I'll put a message giving the number of times the random function was called. So let's swing over to vb.net and program this right now. And now that we're in vb.net, we can actually code this out and make sure it uh, works. I'm calling that uh, test ran because when we run our code, submain is going to run and I want to call test ran so my code down here executes. In the problem, it said she wanted to create a procedure called test ran. When it says procedure, we know it's a sub, we know that it is not a function. So I have set nums 50 as an integer. That's going to be a one dimensional array. When I generate a random number, say, 35, I want to put it inside index 35. I have rnd num as new random. That's the random function that I'm going to use to generate a random number. I have num as integer. That is going to store the value of the random number that is generated. I have success. Now success, I know I need to be successful 50 times. So if I'm able to put a number in the array that currently hasn't been used, then I'm going to increment success by one. That's going to control my loop until it gets to 50. And then I have counter. Counter is counting how many times the random function has been called before all the numbers have been filled. So I'm going to go ahead and create a loop. I'm going to do a post conditional loop, not a preconditional loop. So I'm going to do do loop until success equals 50. Because once I'm successful 50 times, I know I have all the numbers in there. I'm going to increment counter at the very beginning by one. Counter is not set to one here. So um, it's set to zero when I create that variable. So I'm going to increment it by one. The next thing I'm going to do, so I'm going to generate that random number. So I'm going to do num equals rnd num dot next one comma 51. Remember in vb.net, the second number for your random statement is exclusive. They want us to generate a number between 1 and 50. This one is fine because that first number is inclusive. The second number is exclusive. So you definitely want to watch out uh, for that when you are uh, programming. The next thing we need to do is we need to check to see if the current index of the array has a value other than than zero. When I create a 1D array in VB and I'm doing it as an integer, all those have a pre-existing value of zero. Now, if the question said we are going to include numbers zero to 50, I wouldn't be able to check to see if there's a zero, zero already there. I would use a different value. As long as we have a placeholder value that we wanted to check, we can do it. So maybe I could use negative one. I would run a for loop that would set all the values before I enter this do loop until to negative one. But because they're all set to zero, we don't need uh, to do that. So all we're going to do is we're going to check to see does that current index have a value. So if set nums num equals zero, then I know there ha I have not put a number one to 50. Now I'm going to use the index to keep track of what numbers have been uh, generated. For example, if number seven has been generated, then I'm, I'm going to look in index seven. If I don't do that, then I'm going to be having to run a for loop inside my loop every single time to check every index position. And that's extremely uh, inefficient. Will it work? 
Yes, but it's extremely uh, inefficient. So if the number at that index is zero, then all I'm going to do is I'm going to do set nums num. What am I going to set that index to? Whatever number was generated. Now, if I'm able to place that number, I know I was successful. So I'm going to increment that by one. The next thing we need to do is we need to print out how many times the, uh, the random function uh, ran. I almost said the function, but we have a procedure, but it's uh, counting how many times the random function uh, ran. So we're going to say uh, random function ran. And then we're going to do the counter. And then we'll just say times. All right, now the next thing we need to do to make sure this actually works, which is not part of the question that we would write, is to check and make sure we have all 50 numbers. So I'm gonna do 4i equals one to 50. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna output that array. So I'm gonna do set nums. And I'm gonna do uh, i. That's gonna print out uh, all of those. And they should be in order one to 50. So with that, we should have everything we need. Let's go ahead and run it and make sure we get all the numbers and see how many times uh, this runs. Imagine it's gonna run quite a few times. So uh, that's looking good. So we have 50, so that's good. Let's go back to the top, make sure, see how many times it ran. 194 times. So uh, definitely not the best way to generate random numbers. Um, the student needs a better way to do it. And there's a better way uh, you could, you know, she could have used an array list where um, she's pulling those random numbers and then removing them uh, from the array list. But the problem doesn't say that. So we have to use uh, what the problem tells us to do. So we have one through 10. We have 11 through 20. Uh, we have 20 through uh, 30, 30 all the way to 40, and then 40 all the way down to 50. So that is how you code out that problem. Hope you guys found this video helpful. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to help the channel grow. And we'll see you guys in the next problem solving video.